Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So Nobel Prize for uh, 2025 in chemistry has been announced yesterday and it is shared between three scientists, uh, Professor Richard Robson from University of Melbourne, Australia, uh, Professor Susumu Kitagawa from uh, Kyoto University, Japan and Professor Omar M. Yagi from University of California, Berkeley, USA. They have been recognized for their work in the field of MOFs, which is metal organic frameworks. And that's what this video is going to be about. We will talk about that what exactly these metal organic frameworks or MOFs are and uh, why they are or what exactly is special about them that uh, a Nobel Prize is given in that particular field, right? So in next few minutes, we will talk about uh, how it started, what exactly morphs it and why is it so important for us to know about it. If we talk about the history of it, uh, the foundation of this particular field was led by Professor Robson in Australia and uh, he actually was very fascinated with the structure of diamond. Now we all have been taught about the structure of diamond that how carbon forms four bonds in that and how highly packed diamond structure is. And whenever we study about the properties of carbon, we are taught about diamond, right? And I think most of you are aware about it. And that uh, like tetrahedral shape of that carbon, like carbon is attached to four different carbon atoms and that tetrahedral arrangement of carbon gives it such rigid structure and such uh, like different properties. So this fascinated Professor Robson and he wanted to make something very similar, but instead of using an atom to make that he wanted to make it through organic molecules so he started looking upon different methods different techniques he did a lot of experiments but he was finally able to make that and he used for that copper ions so copper being a metal and he used a tetrahedral organic framework which has nitrile group in it okay so that tetrahedral organic framework with nitrile it was able to capture uh, copper on it and it gave a tetrahedral uh, like structure and it was also possible to join different units of it and make a very uh, rigid framework just like we have diamond this led to the foundation of metal organic framework so it was kind of framework framework means something like for example when you build a house uh, you first make a frame of it okay you make it through different like wooden things and bricks you try to make a frame of it and then you fill it up with different stuff right so it's a kind of frame because it is made up of atoms which have lot of cavity in them lot of vacancy in them and because they're made of metal and organic molecule that's why they are called as metal organic framework so this happened in 1980s and after that a lot of people actually wanted to see that what exactly we can get out of it but uh, like the application part of it was unclear but here comes the second Nobel laureate professor Kitagawa he in 1997 he found a metal organic framework which has cavity and in that cavity he was able to absorb a gaseous molecule now this was something which was a application breakthrough because people were able to see now that what these framework they were not only pretty looking molecules but they are useful also not only that later just two years after that he was able to make a flexible metal organic framework in that case it had vacancies or cavities in such a way that when gases were absorbed in it it changes its uh, structure kind of like it inflate and the gaseous molecule can absorb into it and when the gaseous molecule are dissolved that means when the gaseous molecule are taken out from the metal organic framework it collapses or it changes its shape so it was a flexible metal organic framework now this was the time when people started looking upon this field and they were curious to know that what more applications we can have and now one thing was clear that yes we can use this for uh, storing things or for capturing a gaseous molecule but still like uh, making a, a metal organic framework was not easy and not everybody was able to do that and this was where the third Nobel laureate professor Yaki came and he made a metal organic framework of carbon zinc and oxygen again zinc being the metal carbon and oxygen providing the organic framework he was able to make a very rigid cube like or cage like metal organic framework named as MOF5 the interesting thing about MOF5 was that even if you take a small size of it 
let's consider a size of a, a sugar cube in that size of sugar cube you can actually acquire the cavities were so much the surface area was so big that you can acquire things which ca which you can keep in a playground in a football playground so it had a very high surface area that means these morphs were capable of absorbing enormous amount of gaseous molecules solvent solvent molecules and whatnot in late 2000s he was able to make a lot of morphs with different linker atoms with different uh, like morphology with different structures and he basically gave a break breakthrough that make how to make morph so that's what was his contribution so three Nobel laureate number one who led the foundation of it number two who taught us about the application of it and the third one who taught us that how you can make more and more morphs uh, and it how easily you can do that basically as uh, he streamlined the whole process now these morphs have enormous application like they can be used for carbon dioxide capture depending upon the size of morph they can be selectively made in a way that they capture only carbon dioxide molecule thus helping us with the global warming uh, they can also be used for hydrogen and methane storage it can be used for water harvesting so the place which have very dry climate for example desert so there there are no water around but there is water vapor in the atmosphere or in the air around it so these morph can selectively bind to those water molecule and they can capture them and store them so that you can harvest that water and can solve the problem of water scarcity they can also act as catalysis so they can provide space or they can provide as a particular uh, like a small cavity for the reactant to react and form the desired product so they can behave as an adsorbent surface on which reactions can be done they can also be used for a uh, pollutant removal in that case they can be selectively made for a particular pollutant and they can trap that pollutant particularly it is used in factories and industries where uh, the uh, in the chimneys where a lot of toxic gases are released to the atmosphere so before it releases these morphs can actually capture all the toxic gases so that they do not just get released in the atmosphere they can also be used for uh, sensors and drugs so uh, if a particular drug has to target or it has to go to a particular target so morphs can be used to carry that drug to that target so that the drug does not interact with anything around it but it reaches to the target and then it acts over there a morph basically bridges a gap between organic chemistry inorganic chemistry material sciences and sustainability there are various different innovative ways in which it can be used and it is being used not only this the whole finding of morph and the way how this field is emerging this has led to a new era of a new field of chemistry called as reticular chemistry now this term is coined by professor yagi himself and he calls himself as a reticular chemist and i'm very excited to make a separate video on it a very detailed video on it so stay tuned for that subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet and uh, that's it from my side for this particular video i hope you liked it i hope you understood wh what morphs are and why are they important and why nobel prize in 2025 was given to morph